You know, my, uh, my sister's great granddaughter, she has to fight these different ones that want to be friends with her. She said, you know, I'm not going to hate you, but I'm not going to um, go to your house. You're not coming over my house because you are a, uh, you you call yourself a transgender or something. So uh, that was last year. But now I had to um, fight. Now the now but all these young people, you could, if you ask them, they'll tell you what they have to fight through these other kids and how the devil is taking these other kids over through their parents. From a child, the devil is trying to take it. But the devil sees this revival coming. That's why he's trying to do this. He's trying to corrupt them while they're still young. But uh, God's going to stop them, isn't he? He's going to stop them and hit them I want you, I want to read some scriptures here. Thank you, Jesus. From the, uh, I need someone to get a, uh, and uh, Book of Exodus. I like to, I like to follow you, like for you to follow me in the scriptures because we have to get sound by it. You know, somebody going around saying they wanted the two witnesses and trying to bring judgment upon the pastors and upon the churches. And uh, y'all know who they are. They stole one of Brother Phil Hall crews years ago. And they go around here claiming to be one of the two witnesses. This Seducing spirit, what it is. I remember when Brother Terry used to preach about these two witnesses and about Elijah coming years ago, way back in the 70s. And when he started preaching about it, you know, people started getting visitations from the phone that they was one of the two witnesses. And Brother Terry had to put them down, put God in them, had to put down that spirit. I'm talking about why he was up preaching about it. Somebody stood up and they went and got him a, a staff. And Brother Joe was preaching about Elijah. And that man stood up and said, Behold, Elijah. See, we have a lot of religious spirits. He said, You shut yourself down. Shut your mouth up. I'm putting my sock in your mouth. You don't shut up. Who? Yeah. He said, yeah, you. He says, if you don't quit that, God will kick you before you get back home. So you quit playing with God. You open yourself up. And you have to be firm and rebuke them spirits. But that ministry of Elijah is coming. And the Moses ministry, Elijah and Moses, the two witnesses, their ministries are, there's not one, there's only two of them. The ministers, the Bible speaks about it over there on uh, Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses. And over there, Malachi it speaks about Moses and Elijah. And even Jesus, when he was at his most difficult time in his life and needed help, God sent Moses and Elijah. Yes, right. Didn't he? Yes, to help him, to encourage him. And these two ministers, they're going to do their, according to the book of uh, Revelation, they're going, to, they're going to come. And their ministry is going to come. You know, they're going to be in one place. But the spirit of these two ministries is going to be spread throughout the whole world. God's going to take the spirit that was on Moses and put it upon handmaids and servants and sons and daughters, young men, and the spirit of Elijah. He's going to take that spirit put it upon, you know, a company of people, an Elijah company. And there's going to be two companies, an Elijah company and a Moses company. And they're going to operate under that anointing of this Elijah and this Moses anointing. Stay with the Bible. Don't let nobody get you off track. You stay with that Bible. 
I don't want to be now one of them myself. Because I hear they're going to be, uh, after three and a half years, for three and a half years, nobody can touch them. But after the three and a half years, then um, both of these two bodies, two men, are going to be in one place, and they're going to and, and, and they're going to take them, and they're going to um, after three and a half years. You know, for three and a half years, one of them might be able to touch it. Not only them, but the two companies, the Moses company, the Elijah company. Nobody's able to touch them because of that anointing. But after the after the three and a half years of ministry, then, then, the, the bodies, they're going to be uh, tried in the courts. And they're going to be found guilty for what they prophesied and for bringing judgments upon the whole world. Bringing plagues upon the whole world. All of these things that Moses brought back in his day is what's going to operate. What Elijah brought. Those two ministries is going to torment the whole world. And after their ministry is over with, they're going to be killed. And their dead bodies. They're going to refuse to bury it. The dead bodies. They're going to lay in the street. They're going to say the ground ain't it ain't worth it for them to be put in the ground. You know, the goddess, the mother goddess of this world is going to be behind that. They're not worth it for them to be to be. And you know, they're going to urinate on and do everything they can to uh, shame them. But after three and a half days, their bodies are going to be resurrected as a sign to the world of the resurrection of Jesus. But I'm not going in all of that. But I'm just letting you know. Let's stay with the Bible. Let's stay with sound doctrine. Amen. Stay with the scriptures. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I must not believe the Bible. I'm not giving you theology. I'm giving you the word. And when I tell you things, it's going to be from the word. It's not going to be my own theology. And I was preaching a, a, a few uh, Tuesdays, I don't know, four or five Tuesdays ago, let no man deceive you. Y'all need to go back and get that and listen to it. A lot of folks are fixing to be deceived. Demons. Demons is fixing to invade this world like we've never seen by the millions. And if you don't have the sound word, the solid word inside of you, you will be deceived. God said they have deceived the very what? Elect. If it was possible. It was the very elect angels that were deceived by set by Lucifer. The very elect. Not, not just ordinary angels, but these were powerful angels. Mighty angels. That was deceived by elect angels. Deceived by Lucifer. And if, now I'm going to ask you a question. If these powerful angels were cast out of heaven because they allowed Lucifer to seek them, Jesus said that the very elect would be deceived in Matthew 24 if it was possible. Is it possible for, for you being mortals, humans, is it possible for you to be deceived? Yes, millions are going to be deceived because they're not going to read the Bible. They're not going to pray. They're not going to take heed. Millions is going to be deceived. So you better be careful what you be listening to on Facebook and YouTube. Don't you just Google up all this stuff out there. Because these demons are said to be dispatched by the millions. Satan know that his time is short and he's coming with great wrath. And God told us many years ago that he was going to bring destruction uh, uh, how that they were going to be killed by uh, in wholesale numbers because Satan see his time is short and, and uh, he was going to take people out in wholesale numbers y'all remember that? 
This is why we've got to stay on this foundation. This is why, this is why Paul said, I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus and him crucified. Sometimes what causes people to be deceived? They, they start looking for something outside of the truth. Start looking for something else. They fall out of love with the truth. Looking for an easy way. Looking for something. That's right. God allowed a lying spirit to stand before a king because the king didn't want to hear the truth prophet. God sent him a truth prophet and told him what to prophesy. And the king said, uh-uh. Send me somebody else. You always tell me something negative, something bad. And a lying spirit come up before the Lord. So I go and be a lying spirit. And the scripture says because they believe not the truth, or because they love not the truth, God sent them a strong delusion. You better, you better stay in love with truth. I don't care if it hurts you. I don't care if it crucifies you. Stay in love. Don't Deviate. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Stay with the truth. If you're the only one in your house praying, believing, sound God, stay with it. Don't ever open the door for seducing spirits. Because they fix to invade the earth by the millions, man. Huh. But anyway, let's, uh, if you have the Bibles, turn with me to the book of uh, Exodus. Like I got to tell you, we're going to kind of turn, to, turn it uh, into a, a upward rather than, but we need some good sober uh, word now. We don't need all this loose living stuff. All this. Well, I believe it this way. I don't care how you believe it. What the word says what counts. God don't care nothing about it. you believe and my belief. It's what his word says. And we answer this, Father God, answer our plans. Don't you answer this. Don't you take from it. Told us in Revelation. If you add anything, I'm going to add to your plan. And he told us in the Revelation, if you take anything away from my word, I'm going to take your place out of I'm going to take the, your, your, your place out of heaven. Amen. This is serious. This ain't nothing to play with. That's why you've got to read that Bible for yourself. Pray. And ask God to put the spirit of truth in you. I told y'all, now that back in 1969 and 1970, uh, God said there was going to be a lying spirit come before the ministry back then. And it happened too. And it said if we didn't fast in, 20, in, in 69, it said if we didn't fast in uh, 21 days, that that spirit would enter in us and would deceive us. And just about every minister in this ministry that line spirit should be formed. And those that cried out to God, God had mercy on them. God had mercy on them. Should be for me. But but I was I was I was in um, San San Ant San Antonio, Texas at the hemisphere. In 71, I was on the front row and Brother Joe looked at me and said, young man stand up. Said, and he told me that spirit is still before me. He said, but from this day forward, God put the spirit of truth in you. And you'll never be deceived. Because I'm putting my spirit of truth in you. That's right. That's another reason why I'm still here today. That's right. So don't. Um, and we can't go out there and single ourselves out. God said if we do that, the devil will, will get us. If we go one-on-one, -on -one, he'll come at us and he'll break us down. We've got to stand together if we're going to make it in these last days. That's what the Lord told us. Got to stand it. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 40 and verse 38 or verse 34. 
This is why I read so many scriptures. Because uh, I know heaven and earth will pass, but this word will not pass away. Exodus, you got that? One of y'all brother Chuck, just read for somebody. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. Listen, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And the glory of God filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. There was such a glory filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to go into the tent. Because they think of something? What ever because of such a glory that filled the tabernacle? Well, the Bible says, and I've been preaching on this, this is maybe part four of this. The Bible says the glory of the latter rain, the glory that God is fixed to bring in these last days, is going to be greater than that that was in Moses' day. There's a glory fiction to come. It's going to be greater than anything that we've ever had or seen a witness on this earth. The glory of the latter rain. Moses couldn't go inside the church because the cloud was so thick. Is that all of that? Because the cloud abode thereon. And the cloud stayed there. Uh -huh. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The glory of God filled the whole tabernacle. This is now this is another reason why we need to be holy, yeah. sanctified. Because the scripture teaches us, you know, it's the spirit of God that sanctifies us. But he also told us that we have to sanctify our soul, which is our will, our mind, and our emotions. We have to sanctify our soul. And then it says, we have to sanctify our body, set our bodies apart. Cleanse yourselves for all this your stuff. But this Holy Ghost sanctifies your spirit. Set your spirit apart. Make your spirit holy. Cause your spirit to become as Christ's spirit without spot or blemish. When he gave, when he saved us, he gave us a garment, and he said, "Keep your garment from being spotted. Keep your garment from being uh, bitten. And your garment, when he when he saved you and put that, created you a new spirit, he gave you this." Garment. Well, anyway, read. Let's read. Is that all of that, Sister Gretchen? Yes, sir. Verse 35. Oh, 35. That's all of 35. Okay. 2 Chronicles. I don't want to waver into too, many, too much deep waters. I want to keep it at a level where we all can uh, grasp it. 2 Chronicles 5 and verse 13. And it came to pass. And Brother Chuck, you can get Haggai, chapter 2, verse 7 through 9. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 13 and 14. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. That the trumpeters and the singers were as one. As the trumpeters and the singers was as. The reason I'm reading this is because there is a, a glory that's fiction. They hit this earth like we've never seen. And when I say the earth, the church, God's people, and the seekers, those that are searching for him. But he said it came to pass, the trumpeters and the what? And the singers. And the singers. Were as one. Well, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, there was all in one, one accord and in one place, and suddenly there come a sound from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind, filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them clothed and tongue. See, they received the glory too. But they were all in one accord and in one place. Yes. And right here, it said, when the trumpeters uh -huh, and the singers were as one. And the singers was all one. That's why we need to pray when we have anything to do with the front part of the service. Yes. God wants us to be as one yes. because of what he's fixing the earth in. Yes. We can't be eternal minded. Yes. Mind can't be shattered. Can it? Yes. Go ahead. To make one sound. To make one sound. To be heard and praising and thanking the Lord. To be heard and praising and thanking God. And when they lifted up their voice. Yes. With the trumpets 
and the cymbals, with the trumpets and the cymbals, and instruments of music, uh -huh. and praise the Lord, and praise his God, saying, for he is good, he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, yes, that the house was filled with a cloud, that the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, even the house of the Lord, this is that early, this is that first glory that God gave to them, you know, under Moses. And it wasn't perfect. Moses' administration wasn't perfect. But yet, look at how God manifested himself. And, and if he'd done that to them, what about us? What about us? My purpose is not to destroy you, but to give you an expected end. To give you expectation. To give you something to look for in your time. Is what he's telling us. Hey, yeah, chapter 2, verse 7 through 9. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. Uh huh. And I will fill this house with glory. And I'm going to, now he's talking about in our time. And I'm going to fill this house with glory. Say that the Lord of hosts. Yes. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine. Uh huh. Say the Lord of hosts. And the glory of this latter house. The glory of this last move of God. Shall be greater than the former. Shall be greater. I can, Lord, anything be greater than what they had. When, but that glory that they had, man, it was so supernatural. Until all three and a half million came and stood at the, at the bottom of the mountain. And they saw the smoke and the lightning and the thunder. Y'all do it in front of you. Or that Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Read that. For ye are not coming to the What verse is that? 18. Oh yeah, okay. Ye are not coming to the mount. That might be touched. That might be touched. And that burn with fire. And that burn with fire. Nor unto blackness. Nor unto blackness. And darkness. And darkness. And tempest. And tempest. To the sound of a trumpet. Can you imagine? Three and a half million people saying, God, come down on that mountain. In such display. In such, you know, all this lightning. All this thunder. And all this tempest, the ground shook when he spoke. That's that's a verse what, brother Chuck? That's twelve and verse eighteen, right? Go ahead, finish reading that. And the sound of a trumpet, uh -huh. and the voice of words, and the voice of words, which voice that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them. Uh oh, -uh. we can't, we can't endure this. This is too scary. This, this is giving us heart attack. Even Moses trembled, you know, when God would appear to him at times. People don't have no fear of God now, do they? But it's coming back. That's why he said, I'm going to send you Elijah, the prophet. Yeah. And he's going to restore all things. And that's why he said, remember my, remember the law that I gave Moses. Not talking about the rituals, but remember the commandments that thou shalt have no other God before me. Is that right? When you can't buy, when you can't sell, everybody bow down to the mark of the beast. He said, remember the law that I gave Moses. That you are not to bow to no image. You are not to bow to no other God. See, these two ministries, Jesus had the whole world on him, facing everything. He says, Father, let this come past us. But God saw in Jesus being human, and yet he sent him two other men that was human, that he went through some things. And gave him strength 
contained him in perishment. Moses and Elijah came strengthened. You, the Son of God, the world is dependent on you. You can do this. You can, you can do this, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus was transfigured in, right before these uh, Peter, James, and John. What? And his face shined like the sun. Well, see, that's that glory that was veiled behind his flesh. Well, that's that glory that is going to enter inside of us. I mean, slow down. Read, finish reading, All right, Brother Chuck. This is great. What's going on, Read? Well, they could not endure that which was commanded. They could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, yes. it should be sown or thrust through with the dark. And so terrible was the sight. So terrible was the sight. That Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. I exceedingly fear and quake. Uh-huh. But ye are come unto Mount Zion. But you are come to Mount Zion. And unto the city of the living God. To the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. To an innumerable company of angels. Yes. To the general assembly. And church of the firstborn, which was written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Yes. Man, this is deep here. Yes, it is. We're not going to go into that, but I was up. Uh, I remember preaching this Sister Annie's uh, ceremony, celebration, going home. And I, and I read that scripture. We have come to the spirits of just man made perfect. And I'm not, I don't have time to lay the foundation and go into all that, but when a child of God dies, you know, their spirit leaves their body and their spirits are justified because of their faith in Jesus and they are perfect before God. And, and these spirits of these people that have gone here with the Lord, their spirits, the spirits of just man have been made perfect. And some of these are the very ones that's going to come back to us. And just like Moses and Elijah came to strengthen Jesus, some of these are going to come. I don't want to go into this because I tell you, I don't want to mess your mind up here. But let, oh, go ahead, finish reading that, Brother Chuck. Huh? What verse was that? Is this a verse? Which one did I was reading? He was reading. Page 23. Yeah. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Yeah. I'm glad that Jesus took his blood all the way to heaven. And strengthen it at the mercy seat. That's why. Come on, there why? Because that's why uh, we need the blood. That's why sin began up there. So he needs to take the blood to heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Didn't he? That's why. His blood was not, well, not just. You know, just uh, natural, but his blood became spirit. And that spirit, went, he took through the spirit, took his blood. That's why we can apply the blood today because it's spiritual. If it was just a natural, then it would have dried up on the cross and in the ground, and, and nobody could have benefited from it. But because his blood is spiritual, we can apply the blood against the devil and against evil spirits. And we can use the blood 24-7. Can't we? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's read a little more. We went into heaven to sprinkle the blood over the mercy seat of death. That's why sin started when the devil started messing up that. So, Lucifer. Lucifer. He was a created being. He was a spirit. He jealous. 
Because man was created in the image of God. Satan wasn't created in God's image. These angels weren't created in God's image. But Satan, you know, was jealous. Kicked out of heaven. He was high priest and a, a priest under God. And God would operate and he would radiate his glory would come through Lucifer. The morning, he was, that's why Lucifer was called the morning star. Jesus wasn't the morning star, he was the bright in morning star. That's the difference. You listen? I better, I better water this down. But, that's why the devil and his angels are so mad at you. Because they know you are going to be kings and priests. And they know that you are to take the place that he had. And that's why they're so mad. That's why the devil is so mad at you. He wasn't created in God's image. You were. God created man in his image. God created man in his likeness. The devil didn't like that. He's a created spirit. But we are created in God's very image. Angels weren't created in the image of God. But man was. What is man that God might have been? See, God got other things for us that we don't even know about. Earth is just getting us ready for eternity. Getting us ready for, well, go ahead, let's finish. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, uh -huh. much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. I'm on it. Stop right here and uh, go back, come back to earth. Mm. Over in, um, I told y'all about this last week, about how that, y'all remember back in 19 and uh, 93, some of y'all wasn't born then, but back in 19 and 93, there was a man, there was a man David Crash, and he had uh, a, cap, a compound in Waco, Texas. And for the federal government for 51 days he, he stood up against them. They, but somebody said eventually they invaded and what they did uh, that, uh, a fire and that compound uh, burned up over 80 some people. Y'all remember? And that compound better, and we were uh, in one of uh, Brother Brother Charles meetings down in Austin, Texas, during that time when that event was taking place. You remember? Yeah. And uh, there was another man uh, that uh, did not like. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he was there, and he didn't like what he was seeing. Uh, Timothy like that. He was he was there and he got upset. And he planned, Brother Joe had a revival in 95, I mean in 94 in Oklahoma City, close to the government buildings. And we was there. And he and he prophesied, he said, right over in here somewhere, he said it's gonna be a disaster where the whole world is gonna know about it. And Timothy McBay planned. And it blew up. A year later, in 95, he blew up the government buildings. And uh, I think it was uh, many, I think it was 80 people that was killed during that time. You remember Brother Chuck? Me and your Brother Taylor was out there in, uh, on page in the, in the, in the, huh? No, we want to, Keystone, we were at Sky Tour, fishing, and there was a white bass that come in, and we catch them. <laughs> remember that? Just got the number of Chuck bringing them bass on. That's right, brother Chuck. Man, that one out there, man, he was catching fish left and right. And this brother Blue, he said, I appreciate you. He said, I'm going to give you some of these fish. 
And I said, I sure appreciate it, brother. So we got home and changed his mind. So no, I got a big family growing. I better keep it. I said, okay, I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> we went back again. Then it was my time. <laughs> and nobody catching that but me. And I looked at him, Mother Tim. I said, I'd have caught my limit, y'all. I'd better get out of here before they arrest me. <laughs> and uh, I see y'all, and I look back. I said, y'all want to know where they at? Brother Taylor says, Brother Tussman says, Brother Taylor says, Brother Tussman says, yeah, where they at? I said, they in the water. <laughs> then I walked off and left. <laughs> but anyway, back in those days is when that 19 and uh, 95 is what uh, Timothy that day blew up that building in Oklahoma City in April. And uh, the reason why I'm telling y'all this is because it was in 1974 when Bojo had that big tenor uh, in Oklahoma City had a great big tenor and something unusual happened. He saw a vision of this last move of God, of the glory of the latter house. And he saw something, something happen in that service, like a fog coming in, like a mist coming in. And he saw it, I don't know if any of us saw it, the witnesses out, but he had been a prophet, he saw it come in there, he says, like a mist, something has come in here and hover. Brother T, I don't know if you remember that. You were saying, like a fall, like a mist. And he said, while this presence is here, he said, uh, God showed me that people that are sick, people that are diseased, people that are bound by alcohol and drugs, people that are bound by sin, he saw when this presence came in there, everybody that was sick got healed. Everybody that had diseases got healed. Everyone that had, was bound by some kind of demon spirit, it was delivered. And he saw that, that glory coming out while people got the Holy Ghost. They got saved. They got filled. They got delivered. They got the sins forgiven all at the same time. And, and, and he brought a message for that, that God was going to... Uh, do a, a quick work and cut it short in righteousness. And he preached the message. Behold, uh, the Lamb, what not the message was uh, out of the gospel about uh, uh, go, you know, uh, be made whole. That's the message. That was the message. Be made whole. And, and when that glory came in, he said, he said, in the last days, this glory is going to come in. And it's going to be like a fog, or like a mist. And when it come in, everybody that's sick is going to be healed that's under that glory. Everybody that's demon-possessed is going to be delivered. Everyone that is bound, they're going to be set free. Everybody that has sin is going to be, sin is going to be forgiven. He said, because that glory is, is going to represent what God said he was going to do in Ephesians chapter 5. He says, coming back without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. And this glory was going to take away the spots and the blemishes in the church and the wrinkles in the church. And all sin and all sickness was going to be forgiven. He said he's coming back for a church without sickness and without spots, without infirmities, without sickness, disease. Come, that glory, that's what the glory God said was going to come. In the last days, when the church becoming one mind and one accord and one spirit, and get in here and let the God of heaven sanctify you through the Holy Ghost and present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Him, which is our reasonable service, not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There is a church, there is a people.
There is a move that's going to take sickness totally out of the church. All spots, all blemishes, all wrinkles. A church that's going to be a, a glorious church. Hallelujah, not having spots, blemish or wrinkles, or any such thing. He ain't coming back for a sick church. He's not coming back for a bound church. He's not coming back for a church that's put spotted up with all these different evil doctrines of devils. Here's it. That's why we need to get ready. Some pictures have hit this old world like we've never seen. I remember all these issues. That's why God's keeping me around a little bit longer Amen. to refresh you and to plant the seed in you, young ones. Yeah, yeah. Plant the spirit in you. Plant this expectation in you. So you, why there is no vision, the people perish. That's why we're keeping the vision before you. God says, My thoughts of you is not to destroy you, but to give you an expect, expected end. To give you something to expect, to give you something to hope, to give you a future, to let you know that I have not forgot the glory that I've said I was going to bring to this last church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Went around the corner on that one. That's all right. But God says, stir up your pure mind. Didn't he? By way of remembrance. Now let's go to. Uh, did you finish reading that? I don't know. We, I thought I interrupted y'all every time I started reading. But let's go over here to Romans chapter 9 and verse 28. Romans 9 and verse 28. Well, start, at verse 20, start at verse 25 and go through 29. As he said also. As he Ossie, said also. In Ossie, I will call them my people which were not my people. Uh -huh. And her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. That in the place where it was said unto them. Uh -huh. Ye are not my people. There shall be called. The children of the living God. Yes. Isaiah also cried to say. Yes. What is it called the children of the living God? Yes. A living God is fixing to step on the scene. Yes. A living God is fixing to manifest himself. Yes. We are the, you are the temple of the living God. God is not dead. Amen. He's alive. And we are fixing to bring a uh, demonstration of his Reality to the world today. World is fixing no God is alive. Go ahead, finish reading. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, yes, a remnant shall be saved. A remnant is going to be saved. Mm -hmm. For he will finish the work. See, there it is. He shall finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. And cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work. Will the Lord make upon the earth? A short work. God's going to, yes. I remember God telling us this last move, he's going to do a quick work, and the devil ain't going to be able to get in it. Yes. So every time he moved, the devil got in it. The devil, you know, watered it down, diluted it. But this move, the devil ain't going to be able to get in it. I'm going to do a quick work. Yes. That's why people are going to get saved and get healed. And get delivered and get baptized with the Holy Ghost all at one time. All right. Yes, hallelujah. Go ahead. And Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabbath had left us a seed. Except God left us a seed. We had been as Saddam and yes. had been likened unto Gomorrah. We all become, we all men that have been twisting, switching around here. All you women go around here, masculine. If God don't have to do something, look at how the devil is trying to take over. Look at how this Jezebel spirit has this asteroid. Jezebel worship the goddess asteroid. 
Jezebel's spirit is what brings in these perverted spirits, these lesbians, these transgenders, these bisexual, these homosexuals that come in through this old Jezebel spirit. If God doesn't do something, then, you know, nobody, no prayer seed going to be left. That's why God said, I'm going to stop the devil. I'm going to head him off. I'm going to give him a Bible. I'm going to do a quick work in the earth while the devil is out there. You know, I'm going to do a quick work. I'm going to cut him short. I'm going to stop it. Yes. I'm going to head him off. Yes. God hasn't forgotten what he's promised. God hasn't forgotten his word. He's going to head him off. I said it's going to help the devil off. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord. Right now, spread darkness like we've never seen. God said in a time of darkness is when this was, move was coming. Let's read on here. Finish reading. Uh, what were you at? 29. Okay, let's go to Psalms 105, starting at verse 4. Sister Gretchen, get that one. And, uh, uh, and Brother Chuck in Psalms 107 and, and verse 1. Okay, Sister Gretchen, Psalms 105, starting at verse 4. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. And his strength. And his strength. Seek his faith, faith Seek. evermore. Seek it. Seek his faith evermore. That's what God wants us to be seekers for him. Moses never would have saw that fire in that bush if he had to climb that mountain and seek it. What is it? Go ahead. Remember his marvelous works. Remember his marvelous works. That he had done. That he had done. His wonders and the judgment of his mouth. His wonders and the judgment of his mouth. Oh, ye seed of Abraham. Oh, ye seed of Abraham. His servant. His servant. His children of Jacob. Children of Jacob. His children. Uh -huh. He is the Lord our God. Yes. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever. What verse is that? He has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath with Isaac. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few men in number, yes, very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. God ain't going to suffer no man to do this ministry, this last day army, this last day company. He's not going to allow no man to do them because they're going to be operating up under these two ministries. This Moses and Elijah ministry under Moses. They couldn't do that with him until God died. Under Elijah, couldn't do that with him. God had their ministry in his hand protecting them. Keeping them and those that operate in this last day under this end time anointing, this last ministry, God is going to protect them yes. and, 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 and sickness and disease. They're going to be delivered. They're going to be a healed people, a strong people. That's what Joel saw. A strong people that down the way, climbing wall, like man of war. They're going to have such an anointing until nothing can stop them. Nothing can stand in their way. Yes. God said this is an army that he's getting ready to bring forth, raise up, been hidden from the devil. This army that's been hidden from the devil is fixing to come on the scene in these last days. Yes. Going to knock the body out of the hell yes. that you ain't seen. What no. God fixing to do. Get ready. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Come on, finish reading. Yes, yes. Let me catch my breath. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Uh-huh. 
yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Yes. Say, touch not mine anointing. Don't you touch my anointing. See, God said to bring yourself. People can't touch this. Y'all remember that, that mountain? Where the angel come? I mean, where Jesus come on that mountain? He said, tell them, better not touch it. Moses said, oh, they ain't going to do that. God, you get down, Moses. You tell them what I say. They better not do it. They better not. They better for so much as a beast. I mean, this is knowing it. There ain't nothing to play with. That's right. Y'all remember that man when that ark of covenant was being carried in the days of David? Y'all remember how that man, he thought it was going to fall and he reached out to grab it and God struck him dead? David, they would left that ark of the covenant right there for a long time. When he touched it. Then sanctified hands had to carry that. That man that trusted his hands wasn't sanctified, it was unclean. He got out of his place. But this is how sober, this is how sacred this is. You can't get out of your place. You got to find your place, like he said in the book of Joel. Everybody walked in their rank. Everybody went according to their ability. And this man, he, he led us, but yet he touched something. He didn't have no business to touch us. He had gotten out of his place. Yes. yes. Finish reading that. Saying, touch not mine anointing. Saying, touch not my anointing. And do my prophets no harm. Do my prophets no harm. Go ahead. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. Called for a famine on the land. He break a whole staff of bread. Uh huh. And he sent man before them. Yes. Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with feathers, and he was laid in iron until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. And he made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Let's read verse 37 and go on to uh, 40, 45. 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. See, that's what God promised us in heaven. He, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. The glory of the latter house is greater than that of the former. See, God is promised us. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And, uh -huh. there, and there was not one feeble person among their tribe. Did you hear that? Not one feeble person among their tribe. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he speaks about how that they all come under the same cloud. And they was all baptized with the same baptism. There was a cloud that come in there and it and it overshadowed all of the three and a half million. And and not a one of them, when they come through that cloud, not a one feeble person, not one sick person, not well, that was under Moses and under his administration. Well about the glory of the Lord of Are oh, y'all listening? Finish reading that. Egypt was glad when they departed. Egypt was glad when they departed. So the fear of them fell upon them. Yes. And he spread a cloud for a covering. He spread a cloud for a covering. And fire to give them light in the night. Fire to give them light in the night. The people asked. My God. That's that, that's that first story. Huh? That, that, when that cloud went, they went with it. When that cloud stood still, everybody stopped. They wouldn't go nowhere except that cloud. That cloud kept them from the scorching heat and from the burning uh, sun. And that cloud kept them at night in the desert, you know, from the cold and from the scorpions and from the snakes. That cloud was their covering. That cloud was their protection. That cloud represents a glory that God's going to bring in us in his last day. Finish. The people asked. People asked. And he brought quails. He brought quails. And satisfied them with bread from heaven. When you can't buy, when you can't sell. Come on, y'all. When you can't buy, when you can't sell. Invent a rapture so people can get out of here. No, that ain't what happened. People asked. Go ahead. He opened the rock. He opened. Look at that, y'all. 
He opened the rock. And waters gushed out. Waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places. This is under the first glory. This is the early uh, glory that they got these miraculous events, these miracles. Waters gushed out. Well, if God done that for them, what about us? When you can't buy, when you can't sell, what about us? Are we going to take the mark of the beast? He said the glory of the latter house is greater. There's a greater power. There's a greater glory for us. Look up. Finish reading that. And they ran in the dry places. And they ran in the dry places. Like and he remembered his holy promise. Remember his holy promise. Abraham his servant. Abraham his servant. He brought forth his people with joy. Brought him forth with misery, with, with pain, joy. with sickness, joy. with disease, joy. with high blood pressure, joy. with tumors, joy. with cancers. No, he brought him forth with joy. Yes. There was not one fever person among those people. And they had the law. What they had wasn't perfect. But what God gives us through Jesus Christ is perfect. Thank God. That is something greater ahead for you and I. That is a greater anointing. That is a greater glory. That is a greater power. That is a greater demonstration that God has prepared for us. Thank God. The rain, you know, the, the, the wind, the, what do they call it this? When, when, uh, when, uh, they have this marriage. Moses. I mean not Moses, but uh the uh, Jesus brought wine, the first miracle that he done. He brought wine. He turned water into wine. And the Bible says that, that he saved the best for last. Well God has saved the best move for us. The best revival, the greatest miracles, the greatest power. The greatest demonstration, even Jesus himself said, the works that I do shall you do, and greater work, greater, greater than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. There is something greater for us. Don't hold your head down. Keep the vision. Keep the fight. Thanks to God. I'm telling you, God has planted a seed in us of expectancy, of the future, of the revival, of the sons of God, of the demonstration, of the power that he's pictured to. Un I mean, he didn't pray for something. He said that the power that's been hit is now fixed to be revealed to us. The mystery that's been hit is now fixed to be revealed to us. The glory. By the devil and by sin and by these evil spirits that's out there. They're going to be able to touch us. We're going to be sealed by the Holy Ghost. Sealed from all of this disease and all of this power that's out there. Something greater is coming. Something greater is right around the corner. Something greater is thinking to hit us. Finish reading that. He brought forth his people with joy. And his chosen with gladness. He brought it forth with what? Joy. joy. And his chosen with what? Gladness. gladness. Uh-huh. And he gave them the land of the heathen. Yes. And they inherited the labor of the people. Look at that. That they might observe in the statutes and keep God's his laws. I'm going to run these devils away from you. He's going to give you but they have contaminated drunkards, drug dealers, tobacco, and all this other stuff. How they have contaminated. God, God wants you to have a, a, a car that's not full of smoke. He wants you to have, you know, things that the devil had to use and then put it in, and, and, and you get it second hand, third hand. He said, you're going to be the head and not the tail. And what I'm fixing to do, the silver, he said, is mine. And the gold is mine. 
God is fixing to take and, and give it to us, not so we can be, get a big shot or get a big steward, but so we can take it and we can help reach the lost. So we can help spread this gospel and help carry this message to the ends of the world. And he gave them the land of the heathen, yes. and they inherited the labor of the people, yes. that they might observe what? Yes. His statute and keep his law. Praise the Lord. God, I bless you with these. He said, I'm blessing you with these things so you can live for me. I'm bringing you out of these cities into quiet places in the country so that you can serve me, so that you can get back on this foundation, so that when I do send you back in the cities, I'm not sending you back to live, but to bring deliverance, to drive the devils out, to bring healing. Thank God there is something to pray for, to look for, to expect. But you are the generation. You ought to be grateful that God chose you to be in this time, that God chose you to be in this generation. Somebody said, I wish I was back in Moses' day. Moses was looking and saying, no, you don't. I want to be in your day. The light is saying, I want to be in your day. God got something better for you in this day. God got something prepared for you in this generation. Oh, yes. Darkness covers the earth. But he said, God's darkness to people. But rise up, shine, for your light is come. The light is the glory that God is going to give you in this last day. Greater, greater, greater than anything you've ever read or seen or had demonstrated. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Give them a glass out of the seat. Make sure y'all ain't want to sleep on. Make sure y'all are still out there. You're still listening to me. But that's what God fixes to do. I'm telling you, put your, he said, pray. That's what he told Paul in the book of Ephesians. He said, that pray that your understanding be not taken away, that your eyes be open. That God may show you what is the goodness, the riches, the power, and the glory of what he's thinking to do in this last day. There is something that God has reserved for you, for you, and for your children. Fight for them. Fight for their souls. Fight for this avowal. Contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the church. and let the devil just take over my family, take over my home. Oh, we're not going to let the devil just come in here and take over this church and water it down and bring false religion. No, no, no. Thank God that is a people that God has reserved for this last generation. Come on, Brother Jim. Pray with us, please, please, somebody. Pray up with me. Let's get back to the night. But let's talk to God. Help us. Help us. Help us. Jesus, help us. Lift your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us today to receive your word. I receive it in my heart. I receive it into my spirit. Come on, pray with me. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Lord, I receive your word today. Break up my fallow ground that I can enter into this Lord. God, I want the glory of the latter house. God, in my life, in my ministry. Lord, I want this glory to come into my prayer room, into my altar, into my dedication, Lord. Oh, Jesus, God, let this latter house, let the glory shine upon us, Lord. God, we're in a dark time. Let that glory shine on us, Lord. Help us to earnestly contend for this revival. Help us to earnestly contend, Lord. Help us to pray until a cloud comes in our house. Until a cloud comes in our heart. Until that cloud comes into our lives. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, search us out this morning, Lord. You're searching out that river that you're going to use. That you're going to pour out your spirit upon, Lord. Come on, lift your hands and Lord, you said you're going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh, Lord. God, I lift my hands. 
pour out your spirit upon my flesh. You said your sons and the daughters, Lord, pour out upon me. I'm a son, I'm a daughter. Pour out on me, Lord. You said upon the old man, God, I'm an old man. Lord, pour out your spirit. A young man, a servant, a handmaid, whatever we are today, let God know you want his spirit pour out upon you. My God. Lord, send that anointing. Send that anointing, Lord. Loosen the veins of wickedness. Undo the heavy burden. Set the captains free, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Take this yoke off of us. Get this burden off our shoulders. Get this devil off our back. Get it out of our mind. And help us to go for Jesus. Help us to rise and shine. God, you commanded us to rise and shine. You said our light is come. God, let that light shine in me. Turn me on like a light. Lord, turn me on like a light. Turn me on like a light, Lord. Let a, let a light come on inside of me. Come on, tell it. Lord, let a light come inside of me. When I pray, let a light shine in me. God, when I read the scriptures, turn it on like a light. When I fast, Lord, let the spirit of fasting turn on in me like a light. Let it be like a light in a dark place. Oh, Jesus, help us to draw now, Lord. God, don't let this vision die before our eyes. I want to be one of those, Lord, that continue in the apostles' doctrine. Help me to follow on, Lord, to know you. Help me to follow on when I find that latter rain in my life. Help me to follow on to know the Lord. Help me to continue in the faith. Continue in prayer. Continue in seeking God. Not turning to the left. Not turning to the right. Not being caught up by deceptions and false doctrine. But help me to keep my eyes on Jesus. Give me power over these spirits. LGBTQ and all this stuff is going on in the world. Give me power against that stuff, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood over our homes. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, I plead the blood over my home. I plead the blood over my children and my grandchildren, my family, Lord. Those that are under my roof and those that ain't. God, do a quick work in their lives. Do a quick work in their lives. Let the Holy Ghost suddenly hit them. Let the Holy Ghost suddenly fall upon them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.